Hello, 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 Scott Stanfield, and I am the Modern Longevitarian. Welcome, welcome to a cooking episode, the Modern Longevitarian Kitchen, and today we're going to make two things. And this basically is a, a basic diet that I do for my day these days that is, is what I'm doing. So we're going to start out with a basic smoothie. Got the Vitamix here ready to go. Um, I do have a different ingredient that I normally have. Sometimes I, I'll mix it up with a, with a beet and uh, instead of an avocado. Depends on where I'm at with, with diet and those things. But I first off want to say um, tomorrow I'm going to be on Jill Raff's show uh, in the morning. And uh, Jill Raff has the Celebrity Customer Experience show, and, I, and I'm excited to be on that. And then on Friday, um, we've got um, – I'm going to have as a guest here a fellow – Longevitarian Scott Fulton is going to be on the show. And so tune in. We're going to talk about health span. We're going to talk about lifespan. Uh, I know that uh, his, uh, you know, we've got a lot of things that we can talk about. And so tune in for that. It's going to be a great episode. I'm super excited about uh, having Scott Fulton on. And he's big on LinkedIn as well. And if you don't follow him already, go ahead and do that. And I'll go ahead and I'm going to create the show and all the marketing for that uh, later um later to this afternoon so um for, first of all so, so let me talk about what we're gonna make in there we're gonna have a basic keto smoothie today and then we're also gonna do some cauliflower rice which is frozen right here and what i really want to explain to people here is that i get it right you know here i am i'm you, you know uh you know i'm right now i'm full time i'm not working anywhere and i do this type of thing so i could you know take cauliflower and shallots and make my own cauliflower rice and you see a lot of chefs doing that on TV these days, but what about real life, right? So you can buy this frozen organic non-GMO, um, this cauliflower rice, you can batch it out. You can make one batch or cook it for the whole family, uh, you know, and then, and then top that with other vegetables. And so we only have one burner here. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the cauliflower rice frozen and, and with a little bit of garlic, a little bit of oil, some salt, and we're going to start with that and have that cooking over here while I'll make the smoothie. And then when that's finished, you know, we'll then move into prepping the other vegetables and that type of stuff and, and make two things at once. And then um, I don't normally eat this time of day after the show. I'll work out and then I'll have the smoothie. And then um, most likely, uh, if it had like last week, my wife and daughter ate all the, um, you know, all the food that I put together except for the kimchi. I snacked on the kimchi uh, for the dish that we did last week. Uh, so another thing too, is that you can have, you know, basics and staples in your house and, and um, basic staples in your house as a, as a base for every dish and then finish that dish with different sauces. And that's a lot of things that you see in restaurants where they cross utilize products. So I'm just bringing in so for those of you who don't work in the industry, you know, um, you can see the flexibility of how restaurant tours and managers and chefs think when they're putting together menus and how we make things. And some of the best things that are made in restaurants are not even on the menu. It's things that the chefs and the cooks and the managers make for their for family meal and also make for um, their personal meals or things like that that um, are using the ingredients that are in the kitchen differently than what is designed. And I see we have a uh, Mitch Marin. We, um, I use cauliflower rice. I got to lean in a little bit with great proteins and create and innovate. Absolutely. It's a great palette, you know, great canvas. Um, I do know it's about cauliflower rice that uh, takes a little bit more salt to get it where you, where you want it to, at least the brand that I buy from Costco to get it um, to where it needs to be uh, in terms of that. Now, there's a couple things that happen, and we can talk about this for a second, like a keto palate. It's different than a normal palate. I crave salt more than, than most. And I know that most of you think we've been need to do low salt, low fat, all of those things. I'm the opposite of all of those things that we were taught as kids. High fat, high healthy fats. Like in here, in this, um, we have avocado oil, which is for high heat. We have that. Uh, and then I may drizzle some extra virgin olive oil on there. Those are really the only two oils we use in addition to grass-fed butter. Those are the things. So I crave salt. And Dr. Stephen Finney, he's an MD and a PhD references a study that says the optimal amount of sodium that we should have in a day is about 4.8 grams. And that's a lot compared to what, you know, we're, we're being told we need less than two grams. So this is more than double than what we need. So, um, and you can see 
Um, I've been keto now for over five years or five years uh, last month. And I've been intermittent fasting for over nine years now. And that's how I lost 40 pounds the second time. So the first thing I got, you got to do with this cauliflower rice, and I'm going to put this pan on to heat it up here while this is, while this is going, is, um, is uh, you got to break this up. Or you could just throw it in the pan and do that, but I like breaking it up. And sometimes I use just the back of the knife, you know, and do this. And it's been out of the freezer for like 10 minutes, so it's a little softer than what it normally would be. And you could, you know, you could cook a portion of this and put it back in the freezer, or you could just cook it all and then repurpose it down the road and reflavor it in different ways. Now, there's a lot of fluid in this, you know, frozen into it. So we're just going to let this cook over here. Now, one of the things is that you can, that is learn from, what was that, the China study, right? And so forks over knives, right? They, they talked about, um, wow, there's a lot of oil, right? They came out fast. <laughs> um, I have a comment from Jennifer Larsh. She said, why do you go crazy on salt on keto diet? All right, that's a that's that's a great question, Jennifer. And the reason is is because the first week people are on keto or go on low carb lifestyle, you can lose up to five pounds, and that weight is mostly water weight, which is about two thirds of a gallon because a gallon of water weighs seven pounds. So basically, you're walking around and with a low carb ketogenic diet lifestyle, a little bit more dehydrated than before, and so you need electrolytes to help hold on to the water that you are drinking. And there's three main electrolytes. Salt is one, sodium, sodium, magnesium, and potassium. So there's three ways to get potassium in your diet. Uh, you can't really supplement uh, potassium the right way because there's an FDA regulation that you can only get like 97 milligrams per serving. So it's really difficult. I think Mother Nature, God, the universe, whoever that you look to as a higher power gave us three ways to really get potassium in our diet. And that is bananas, coconut waters or coconut and avocados. And avocados are perfect for the ketogenic diet. A whole avocado is going to be about 250 calories with three net carbs. And you're going to get tons of potassium in there. Magnesium, I supplement with magnesium, which is um, calm. And I do that before I go to bed. Um, there's another magnesium that I really love that's actually here in Utah. Um, it's called Electrolife and Dwayne. Um, sponsored my first podcast that I had. I've known Dwayne for a number of years. And, um, and uh, so that, but that magnesium actually wakes me up. And that's actually comes from the Great Salt Lake. And it's, um, it's basically a condensed version of what the minerals are in the Salt Lake. And so there's so many things. So electrolytes are important for multiple reasons, right? And that is um, one to help you keep being dehydrated. 72% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. Right. And then so that's a, that's a big one. And then um, and so that that's the reason why you got to up your salt. And, but you actually salt is healthy for you, whether you're on keto or not. So those are the two things there. What's up? We have another comment from Mitch Marin. He said fresh cauliflower rice is always best because of the moisture content with frozen. Any local supermarket carries it now. Absolutely. I agree 100 percent. You know, uh, when I worked, there was one restaurant I worked for, we made some cauliflower rice and that's where I got the shallot idea and all those type of things. Right. And so you'd have to, you could cook it all first, steam it and then finish it and, and those type of things. So there's different ways that you can do it. And so um, I've actually used about four or five different, I'm going to keep talking about because I forgot to get a utensil here, four or five different cauliflower rice recipes that, um, that, that I use. Um, one is you could do it in a, a wider pan where you're cooking off a lot of the moisture and you can brown it and caramelize it in a way. Um, then you can, you can make a cheesy version a, a plant-based cheesy version with nutritional yeast where you put for this in here, you probably put like a bunch, like seven, maybe at, if you're really super cheesy, 10 tablespoons in there. Right. And I'm just going to make sure this isn't overcooking on the bottom here. Right. So those are the, the things you could do. So and then I'm going to add a little garlic to the action here on this cauliflower rice and then we'll get to making the smoothie. Right. And what I do with garlic a lot of times is I'll just smash it and throw it in there. So I'm just pulling the oils out. 
instead of taking the time to really get into mincing it and, and all of those things. And knowing that this is going to be something that I'm not going to eat all of it in one day, uh, it's going to be a couple of days. I'm going to put a couple pieces, you know, extra pieces of garlic in there. So it's in there for tomorrow, right? Jennifer Lorsch said, thank you so much. That was very helpful. Awesome. Yeah, you're welcome, Jennifer. If you got any more questions, let me know. You know, I've been keto for, like I said, five years. And so I've um, had to slay a lot of keto dragons, you know, and learn how to get into ketosis and fat adapted without, you know, having the keto flu, you know, all those things. So, and gosh, in the restaurant business, over 25 years. And you got to think I've, I've bought and, uh, a lot of food, been around a lot of chefs and picked up a lot of ticks tricks tips you know what we would call hacks these days that type of stuff you know and things but you know i was my, my my daughter who's my producer sitting right over here right she's sitting right there um and you can't see her but um we were laughing about my 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 diet when i was growing up as a kid just this morning i mean my breakfast when i was you know 18 19 20 years old 21 years old was a honey bun uh, from the convenience store and an orange Gatorade, right? And every day, and and you could run a knife through this, do a couple chops in there. And some of this is a little, I, they were kind of low on on uh, garlic and ran out at, at Whole Foods. Um, and uh, so I bought a whole bunch. And so some of this is sprouting already. So, which is pretty cool, right? Cause you get this garlic chive thing going on. All right, so let this keep going. This is at the right temperature. This is probably going to take seven to 10 minutes to cook like that. All right. So smoothie. And I got garlic on my hands, so my smooth, my smoothie might have a little garlic action on it. Let me rinse this knife off. So. I need a I need a team of sous chefs behind me here, right? All right, um, we're gonna do a smoothie here. All right, so the basic smoothie, and my wife helped me a lot with this recipe because I was struggling with the consistency and that type of stuff, right? So I start with. A, a pint glass, about two thirds away full of water, and I'm going to put everything back in this. Now, if you, you got to go behind me. <laughs> Somebody's got to go behind me. A live show. All right. So the, the the concern about low carb or keto is getting out of ketosis, and you're going to do that if you have too many carbohydrates. So this is a half a cup of, of frozen blueberries, organic, non-GMO blueberries. And this is going to put you at about seven net carbs um, here. So it's like 17, yeah, about six and a half net carbs in here, right? So when you do that, um, if you do a full cup, which is a serving you'll read on the bag, it's 17 minus four. It's going to put you at 13. If you're only starting to say at 25 net carbs and you put half the carbs you need in a day in a, in a smoothie, right? And I'm throwing in this, you know, pre-cooked. We buy these. I like buying these beets sometimes right? These pre-cooked beets, right? So I can finish them in dishes or stuff like that, right? So I'm going to put one of these in there. So I'm, I'm pushing, once you're in ketosis for a while, you can push up to 50, 55 carbs. But if you're trying to get into ketosis, you need to stay at 25 net carbs. Net carbs is this, gross carbs minus fiber. And then if you're buying, eating something that's, you know, like a, a Quest bar or something like that, they'll subtract out the, the sugar alcohols uh, in erythrol or, you know, any of those, that type of stuff. So anyway, again, trying to make things a little bit faster, you know, buy these pre-cooked beets, right? And so, and this is all about fiber. Your, your, your gut health, your gut microbiome, your gut microbiota needs prebiotic fiber, and you're going to get that. So this is why this, I'm not juicing, I'm fasting. So all this goes in here. I like to add a little citrus to the action. We got, uh, we got lime. And so we're going to put this in the, the half a lime that's been peeled into the into the smoothie and i'm okay if a little white is in there one well, other thing that happens being keto and i'm not talking about keto a lot today i don't know why it's just this is what's coming out but 
um, your palate's going to change. You don't need food that is quite as sweet. And when you eat something that is sweet, if you actually break down and have some sugar or anything that's been sweetened with honey or agave or any of that type of stuff, you're going to, um, it's going to be super sweet for you. And so my palate's changed over the years where I don't really need any of that, any of that type of stuff. Now, um, I could throw carrots in here, those type of things, but all right. So power greens, we're going to get this big bag of power greens and cauliflower sounding, sounding good over there. All right. So this is going to be heavy on the greens, right? So this is because I'm going to get, this is like eating a salad, like like three cups, four cups of greens in here at one time. Okay. I'm getting prompted to stir. Cauliflower rice over here. Okay. All right, so we're gonna make this smoothie. Now, normally the beet would be an avocado, half an avocado, quarter avocado, depending on how many calories I'm looking to get or how many things I'm looking to get. All right, it switched sides. You can drag them and switch them back, but it doesn't matter. All right, so here we're going to go. Vitamix. I got something cut. There we go. Let's blend this into a smooth. You want this? Oh, and then we could do things like this, right? If you want to sweeten and still stay low carb, you could take this non-GMO organic. Uh, Stevie, I got this at Walmart last night. It's called uh, Pure Simply Sweet. Um, you could also um, do things like this. This is a vegan. Yeah, this is a, this is where I'm fun over here. This is a vegan um, a protein shake that's got prebiotic fiber in it as well. So um, it's flavored orange ginger. It's non-GMO. It's a vega. And I don't, nobody sponsor me or any of those things. And I'm not making any money by trying to sell any of this stuff, but this is, um, when I do plant-based, um, you know, I love, I love the Vega products as well. I also, a lot of times I don't have any right now, um, use straight up just hemp protein unflavored and put that in there. And, um, and I, do you know, in the last bit since I've been furloughed, I've been doing more and more smoothies and, um, and so this one's a little because of the beet. It's a little red, right? Versus um, being bright green, and then we normally do a straw. Let's see how this. It's been plus with you. You don't need sweetener because you got the beet in there. Good. Gonna try it. Yeah. Uh, getting a thirteen-year-old try a smoothie with beet in it. It's gonna be a little interesting, right? All right. So we're getting close on this rice here. So it's not that bad? Yeah. And there's no stevia in there. Right? Any other comments come through? Anything? All right. So we're going to move this out. You want to plug that? All right. We're going to put this over here. Let's move this out of the way. All right. We'll watch this later. All right, that's Caliente Jefe. <laughs> it could be hot. All right, what are we gonna do? All right, we got these greens. Let's let's, uh, let's look at some carrot. We got some heirloom carrots here. Again, right? So just simple things you could pick up, you know, to make add a little color, a little extra fiber. Plant diversity is super important when it comes to. Um, um, when it comes to prebiotic fiber, right? Because each each different vegetable that you have will will have different fiber in it, right? And will have different 
micronutrients and all of those things, right? So, so it all, it just kind of builds on itself, right? And we're going to just throw this in here for right now because I've got to break some of this stuff down. So we can, and then when this cauliflower rice is finished, we'll switch pans and get that going, right? I don't normally do carrots in one dish because it takes so much longer for them to cook. Probably could cut them a little bit smaller or something like that. But runaway carrot. I can smell the garlic in that rice. Smells good, doesn't it? What was it? Emily used to say, called it smell vision right? We have a comment from a Facebook user. She said, she or he just said, I just found you, but I love it. Thank you very much. That means a lot. This is episode 82. We haven't done all cooking. This is, um, cooking is something that it was an idea that came up 40 episodes ago. And, um, and we just, we just started doing it recently. All right, this is this is done here. I'm gonna pull this off and let this cool for a minute back here on the stove because I don't have another place to put it. All right, so we've got. All right, so you, and when you're doing a one pan type dish like this, right? You're gonna to need to start with the things that take the longest to cook. That's why I broke the the. And so, like for instance, with this, it would be, you know, the carrots are here, right? We've got an a little bit of squash here, right? So zucchini and yellow squash. And, you know, knowing that I had the beets and the, and the blueberries in earlier in the day, right? You know, I, I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of squash when it comes to this particular dish because there's, there's carbs in this as well. So you, it, could be, it could push me over the carb count. Yellow squash is kind of like the forgotten. I don't eat so much of of that one, right? I've cut so many of these. Back when I worked for Dale Augenstine Steamer Seafood Company, their vegetable medley had uh, squash in it. I was a I started as a dishwasher and a prep cook working for them. All right, let's see more garlic. Well, I got garlic in the um, in the rice. I don't need garlic in that, right? So got that. And then we've got some mushrooms. It'll go next. And I got two types of mushrooms. Got shiitake and uh, these baby bellas. Just gonna, just a rough chop on these, right? Because they're gonna absorb a lot of the fats that are in there. They're like a sponge, right? <clears throat> so this is, you think about the different, the number of different plants in this one particular dish right it's pretty cool that you, you can get all of this in one dish right and so they're going to hold a lot of oil all right i think this is we'll put we're going to go here i think we should flavor this a little lace what do you think okay. what do you think how we should flavor this What uh, what country do you think? Hmm. I don't know. North Africa. You don't know. Hmm. I don't either. We did Asian last week. Maybe Mexican. Or Indian. We can do curry. Oh, we've got this turmeric paste. All right. We could. Um, Oh, you mean the Korean? Mm -hmm. I could go with that. Sure. You can mix that in um, the cauliflower rice. Mm -hmm. Not this, but do the uh, goji con yeah. paste. All right, let's do that. Where is it? Here it is. All right. We. All right, so what we're doing is we're working on flavors here, right? We're, how we're going to flavor this dish. We didn't even know, and this is pretty much how 
Um, you know, most people have, it's pretty much how I cook. Um, but most people have about 10, maybe 14 different recipes. They rotate, rotate through just buy the same thing from the grocery store over and over and over and rotate to, through those things. And, you know, but they're like, then you get this, Hey, you know, I had, you know, we had Mexican last night. Let's have Italian tonight, you know, you know, those type of things. Right. And it's, um, you know, but when I, when I get to cooking, it's like, okay, what am I in the mood for? Right. And what do we have in the fridge? Right. So we have this fermented chili paste right here, which is, uh, the goji gan, goji, goji gan, and it's the original, not super spicy. It's got a little sweetness to it. You have to be careful again, if you're doing low carb, right? So this uh, one tablespoon has nine grams of carbs and less than one gram of fiber. So it's going to be a, a big carb day. So I might fast. I, did, I didn't eat a lot yesterday, actually. Um, fasted most of the day and um, had a little ahi tuna about six o'clock, right? Yesterday. So it wasn't a big fasting day for me, right? So, I mean, it was a big fasting day for me, not a big eating day for me. I had some stuff last night later, but um, so I'll do that. Like if I over eat carbs on one day, right? I'll fast to get back into ketosis the next day. And that's how you cycle the simple, that simple cycle carbs and cycle in and out of keto. Or you want that? All right. So let those carrots cook down some while we're flavoring this rice. I think this is begging for a little soy sauce here. Oh, you know what it needs? We could do mayonnaise in there. Kind of balance it out. Another thing I love doing from time to time too is like with rice, and it would be cauliflower rice now, would be um, taken um, and put some coconut oil in it. It's like a, you know, a tablespoon of coconut oil on a whole batch of rice and it gives us this um, like Thai flavor to it, right? So it's super cool to do stuff like that. All right, let's get this, let's get these carrots going. These carrots may have been a mistake. You know, and this is the this is the issue with being a hundred percent plant based and being ketogenic. It's it's not easy, right? Because if you're eating all these plants to get enough calories, right? You're going to um, you're going to you could you could bump up against your carb threshold and get out of ketosis really easily that way. So adding fats in a, in a way is is a way to, to do that to get your carb count up. But yet then you have to be careful like with your proteins and that type of stuff about um, uh, about having too much protein and not having enough fiber and, and finding the balance between all of those things. So any suggestions, all right? And my producer is actually talking in my ear here. Does do you guys have any suggestions? Do you have any ideas, concerns? Am I blowing your mind? Think I'm crazy? What do you think's happening here? I put a little mayonnaise, believe it or not. A little of this Primal Kitchen avocado oil mayonnaise. Just put that right in this cauliflower rice with this uh, Korean fermented chili paste. It's got garlic in here, right? So now it's got some weight to it, right? I think I'm gonna call that right there. I'm going to give this a taste. Break my fast a little bit. Mm. Want to try it? There you go. All right. Those carrots are good enough to wear. Got some spice to that. That's good. All right. Going in with a squash. This kind of rough country chop here. What do you think? Pretty good?
my little producer over here, Lace, got her Instagram channel. It's got 4,000 followers on it. It's called Kids Crazy for Healthy Cooking. Go check her out, right? And uh, she's actually been on TV cooking, you know. Crazy with a time. Oh, it's crazy with a K. Kids crazy, crazy with a K. Number four for healthy cooking, and uh, and check check her out. Now, what I do too is I'll add in um, salt and oil for each time I add things in because you can hear the water coming out of this, coming out of this zucchini and the squash, this yellow squash here, right? Turn this down. I don't want to burn it because the sugars in there will actually burn if you're not careful. All right. And then a lot of this oil that's in here will be absorbed into the mushrooms here. All right. So here's our dish we're working on, right? This is the foundation for it. Cauliflower rice. Just got garlic in it that we cooked with some avocado oil because it likes the high heat, doesn't turn rancid. We've got this paste in here uh, and uh, fermented chili paste concentrate. And um, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. We like mixing this with mayonnaise for a, a variation on spicy mayonnaise when it comes to eating soup. There we go, We're back on. Yep, we'll do that next. All right, we'll put this out of the way. I did, I'll do it. All right, so what we did is we took some super firm tofu. Super firm tofu, right? Organic, super firm tofu. And then put it in our little magic press here to get um, about a thimble full worth of fluid out of it because it's super. Oh no, actually more than that. You drained it already? I spilled some on the floor. There's some on the floor too. Actually, we got more out of there. Even though it says it's drained, it's not pressed, right? So it's it was tough getting. It took both of us to get this super firm into this press. It may, this may actually give me a black eye or something. You like opening that champagne stuff. All right. So um, we probably got a quarter cup of fluid out of this. So this is going to help it absorb some of the juices in our dish. Maybe a half a cup. That's how much. Did you just clean it up? Yeah, oh, did you get the cleaning crew to come do it? I cleaned it. Right. So uh, serving is about, about this, right? In there. But. We're gonna do a little bit more, right? Right? Because there's more than one of us eating this, right? All right, like this. And super firm, it's just about the texture, really, All right? And you could do a lot of things with tofu. You can marinate it. You can, uh, we're gonna take that one that I just showed you, we're gonna put it in the freezer, right? And then we're gonna use it next week to, we made these fried little nuggets, tofu nuggets that were covered with, parm no, 100% plant-based, covered with Parmesan cheese. And we had seasoned that like you would, like any type of breading, right? We put in, salt, pepper, some dry mustard, put in some smoked paprika in there and really made some cool um, little, little snacks, right? And we put buffalo sauce on it and it was really cool. Anything, producer? Nope. All right, we're gonna put some mushrooms in. Absorb some of this fluid here. Let those cook down. Now, what we could have done with this cauliflower rice, you could have, at the end, and I may even do this tomorrow, stir an egg in it, scramble an egg, stir that in, cook it, make you like a, you know, an Asian style, you know, egg fried rice type thing. 
I added mayonnaise to it today, which is the same. It's got egg and oil in it and that type of stuff already. So, you know, you can you can do it in different ways like that. Let's season that. And then I think that because we got a lot all this fat going on, Lace, we're going to have to put a little acid on this to brighten the dish up. And like, this is another thing about keto that most people don't get, right? They get tired of eating fat, tired of eating all these fatty foods and those type of things, they forget to actually balance a dish, right? You think about, you know, what soy sauce? Does it add acid to a dish to balance it? It adds sodium to it, adds salt to it. Yeah, it does do that. But does it have an acid to brighten it up? Yeah, what about vinegar? What about vinegar on a salad, you know, on a salad or a balsamic vinaigrette to actually, you know, brighten the dish that way? What about when you squeeze on seafood, squeeze lemon on, on seafood? Does it balance out the fattiness of that particular item? It does, right? Why do you do that? You look at traditional, like for instance, comes to mind Mexican, right? They may have a super fatty beef, like head tacos, where they're cooking the head of a cow and pulling the pulling that off, right? And then they take and they put fresh lime on it, right? So how many times you see beef paired with fresh lime squeezed onto a dish in Mexico, right? A lot, right? And so uh, don't forget to balance your dish if you're cooking keto. If you're gonna have a lot of oils in it, to balance it out with an acid. And there's several different ways of doing that. You know, you have you know, natural acid that come from a fruit, right? Like uh, lemon or lime. You got some? Oh, you keep looking around. Lemon, lime, you've got, we take when we do beef broth or heavy, you know, brothy style fatty, you know, not cream, but brothy fatty soups um, or, or just broth in itself, we'll put apple raw apple cider vinegar in it, right? To balance it out, to change the flavor of that. So just understand that that's why people get bored with the ketogenic diet because they just don't understand that they think that you know they they don't have to balance a dish like a chef would or like you, even when you balance a drink right you mean i think you it's okay what's in a you know what's in traditional drink right you've got a base liquor right you got a sweetener right which could be stevia or something like that and then you've balanced that you know you balance that with a you know, lemon, lime, you think of all the drinks that have lemon and lime juice in it, right? So you're, you could have, you know, salt in a, di you know, in a drink, right? Like a margarita or you have sugar in one, like a lemon drop or, you know, any of those type of things, right? And so you balance these things out. And so don't just don't, don't get caught up into, hey, um, I'm going to eat a whole bunch of fat here and you got fat on your tongue and, and those type of things. People don't even, you know, realize that the purpose of a dry red wine from Europe, an old world wine, is to strip the fat off your tongue so the last bite of your meal tastes just as good as the first bite of your meal. You know, in America, we don't, we, we may drink wine as a standalone, right? We don't, or a drink as a standalone, right? And, and so um, where in Europe, they drink wine with food, right? And, um, and, and so, and so, so what happens is, is that that that's the design to, to to enhance the dining experience right this is what this is right it, you, you you know just because you 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 know are on a a, a specific healthy plant-based diet doesn't mean you can't have a foodie experience where you can you know put you know pair a great wine with a dish or something like that like this right now so far you know you typically with a, a spicy dish you would go sweet right so what sweet wine would you have with this particular dish, right? Well, you could have, you know, a Chardonnay, you could have a Sauvignon Blanc, you could have champagne with this, right? Because, you know, sweet and heat go together and those things. Did, we, did Chef Bernard give us a good comment, All right? He said, lemon, lime, and oranges and a touch of honey go great with any salat and low fat dishes. Awesome. Yeah, you're, I, I can't question him. He's been a chef way longer than I have. Thanks chef for watching the show, tune it in. Right. Um, you, you know, this is, you know, we're going to start planning out these dishes a little bit better, putting out recipes and things like that. But, you know, we're just basically talking about how we can balance dishes, you know, and, and how you can make what you have in the fridge into something that everybody loves. Right. And, and, and not have to repeat the same things over and over again. There are so many things you could do at this point right here. Right. You could, if you had a rotisserie chicken that you have, you could pull chicken and you could throw in there. We had cooked over ground beef, you know, cooked ground beef. You could, because this is basically just salted vegetables cooked in avocado oil. It's a blank canvas. You can do anything you want with it. Now, we have gone Asian by putting this 
GojiCon, you know, fermented chili paste in the cauliflower rice. So we've kind of made a commitment to go down the Asian trail, right? We could pull out kimchi again. We could go stay Korean. We could do that, right? We could add soy sauce to this. We could make a sweet and sour version of the vegetables that are in here. We could, we could, there's a lot of things that we could, we could do with this right here. You could, if you were crafty, right? You, you know, and we don't have, we only have one burner, right? But we could whip together the elements of like a general sal's chicken, right? Or, you know, those type of things and, and, and do that general sal's tofu. There's all these different things that we could go with this, you know, dish, right? We've, you know, two weeks in a row, we've gone Asian, which is an interesting thing, but it's, it's where we're at. So we've got to think about how we're going to finish this. And then while we're doing that, let's go ahead and let's slide some tofu in here, right? See if we can, and you can see that, I don't know if you can see this or not on the screen. Maybe Elise, you can tell me if you can see this, but there is um, a lot less juice, uh, oil and water in this. It's dried out some because the mushrooms have, a, mushrooms will absorb release and then kind of absorb again right and so you can play around with the consistency of your of your dish being how your mushrooms and what stage you're in and i'll be honest with you mushrooms are the best when they're actually roasted right i'll start them in a pan like this and then we'll throw them in the oven and let them finish in their rust and finish or maybe with a little bit of butter or things like that you can even finish this dish with butter and still be 90 percent over 90 percent plant-based by all means you i think this is plants right here right this is plants this is fermented soy right so there's plants everywhere in this dish there's no animal protein in it so far but you could if you wanted to add some some creaminess to this dish you could finish with butter and we may we may actually do that right what do you think yeah. yep all right and then um there's a couple things right in this as well right so you're cooking with salt and then you may add some salt at the end to bring in the flavor to the front. So you have these layers of saltiness that are in different ways. Now, this probably, in, in a normal world, I would have done these things at one time, and this would still be warm. I could put this in the oven to keep it warm, it may dry it out, those type of things. But when you put hot food on top of this, this is gonna, it's gonna, you got plenty of heat in here to, to, to heat this up. And especially the oils in this are gonna keep the center of this cauliflower rice warm as well. So, the drizzle a little bit of earl oil sorry i'm i'm from south carolina i was playing around with things a little bit of earl put a little bit of earl on that tofu billy bob right <laughs> they never you would never hear that you know somebody saying those things right um let's see here i'm gonna put this smoothie in the fridge in the cooler for post-workout, right? And we said, we'll put a couple of these things away here. We don't need. All right. Um, we said butter, finish with a little butter, or we could finish with buffalo sauce. With the goji cut? No, it wouldn't work. Nope. Butter. Okay, so we got butter. And then <clears throat> that's it, I think. Well, soy sauce. That's what it was. That's what I saw. A little bit of soy sauce in there. Let's see how we're looking here. I know I'm using my hands, but sometimes that's the only way to do it. I'm not in a restaurant, so I don't have to worry about cross-contamination somebody else's food here. Here, it's getting a little color on it. A little GBD action. All right, so we're, fin we're gonna finish with soy sauce. We're not gonna cook with the soy sauce because I don't wanna like mess up the dish and what we got going on there. Let's do this. Mm. 
And I like putting things in one bowl, right? Where I'm, you know, you guys can see that here. And it's got some steam coming off of it. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool stuff. All right, put that there. Let's get another bowl to put some of these veggies in before they burn. That way we can make some space for this tofu. So again, we got in here, we've got two different types of carrots, two different types of squash, and two different types of mushrooms. Didn't plan that. This happened to be what we had in the fridge. And we got cauliflower rice that's got garlic in it. There you go. You want to try those? Turn this up a little bit. They need more, more time. Good? You like it? You want some cauliflower rice? No? Sorry, you want regular rice? Sure. Okay. We'll heat some of that up for you. It's right here. They made rice for dinner last night, so we've got leftover. We've got some rice in here, right? Oh, and I didn't finish it with butter. Forgot that. You can finish the tofu with butter. You could finish the tofu with butter. That's your that's your specialty, mm -hmm. right? When we get there, or I could put butter in. Your, your rice. So this is a way that you can make things for the family, right? Because I'm low carb and keto. There we go. Turn the fire up a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll let that cook. Wow. Anybody got any questions about anything out there? We should probably play music during this part, right? Or something, right? Because you know me, when I'm cooking, I'm listening to what, right? Listening to a whole bunch of different things. A whole bunch of different things. A lot of times I listen to the chef soundtrack if I want to be in really creative mood, right? And, and to that. I listen to a lot of Hootie and the Blowfish, Tom Petty, Eagles, James Taylor, Craven Melon. If you're from South Carolina, you probably in your my age, you know who Craven Melon is. You also right? listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh yeah, I listen to podcasts while I'm cooking too. All right. All right, let's get this to break up a little bit. Wine? Lime. Lime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. We'll do that over the dish to finish the whole dish. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we won't do the honey though. Okay. Turn this up. See if we can get a little color on here. <clears throat> We're at 51 minutes, Lace. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next step would be on the veggies, add a little bit of soy sauce. 
And because I'm gluten free, we buy the Tamari gluten free soy sauce organic version, full on sodium. We don't do the low sodium stuff. <clears throat> All right. So this pan is looking good. It's the first time we've cooked the uh, the super firm this way, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull some of this in a minute and put your rice in to show people we're gonna cook your rice with the uh, with the butter. And we'll finish your dish, we'll finish my dish, we'll do those type of things, right? We'll do that. <clears throat> and do we have a garnish? I think we have a couple. Um, still lingering some green onion in here from the same from last week. Yep, so we put this in the water, right? And it sprouts up some, so we got just a little bit in there. Not a lot. Because <clears throat> we eat them faster than they grow. Oh, is that where they're going? Yeah. Your ramen noodles? Mm -hmm. All right. My gluten free rice noodles. Gluten-free rice noodles. All right, let's see if there's, make sure I'm not burning this stuff here because I got it kicked up to full. There we go. And it's stuck a little bit. It's gonna happen. Oh, there we go. We squeezed all the water out of it so it so throw it a brown, but it sucked up all the oil. You gotta be careful. last time let this cook i'll put a little bit of butter a little bit of this butter in here okay not much just a little bit because it's getting a little dry in there oh what's going on there yeah adding another vegetable plant diversity is the most important thing you could do for your gut health plant diversity let's scallion over there for lace right <clears throat> Okay, let's pull this. It's good here. All right, I'm gonna take the less crunchy ones out because I know you like that. Give me your bowl. Let's do this. All right. And you go get rice on the top of yours. A completely different plate presentation than what I got because we did it out of order here. Runaway tofu. Right. All right. There we go. Now, we're going to go quick on this. Just going to have a little bit of tofu in there in your rice, okay? We don't want to brown the butter, so we're getting rice on top of it pretty quick. Should I cook it all? So your brother can have some? Mm -hmm. You want soy sauce in there too? Mm -hmm. oh, made a mess. Made a mess. All right, see if I can clean this up. That in there. There's that. 
Soy sauce. Soy sauce is life. All right? Butter in there somewhere. Probably just blew people's mind mixing butter and rice together. It's so good. But also, when you're making the rice, throw a tablespoon of butter in there as well to give it. You know, when you're when you're doing that, don't know, chef, if that's common practice, but. I'm not classically trained, so I get to break the rules. Which, in food these days, all the rules are being broken. Pretty much. All right, we don't, we don't want to burn this. So a little reheated. That's just crazy. She, I don't know if you heard that or not. She saw, my daughter saw on Instagram the other day where somebody made ice cream out of fish. So that was their base? Mm -hmm. The way they had sugar, cream, what do they put in it? You know, basic ice cream thing. Like they, they had vanilla ice cream and they mixed Argentina into it. Like chunks. Chunks into it? Like cubes. Oh, so it wasn't blended, right? So it wasn't yeah. like you're eating like a pureed fish? No. <laughs> The, the 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 uh, obsession with protein in our world, right? It's crazy. All right, this is uh, getting these little little clumps broken up a little bit. So you get a little soy sauce and a little butter on every single grain of rice. <laughs> so we did this dish kind of like. Big rocks and pebbles, and now we're going to put the sand in there, right? So you can get everything in the bowl, right? You know, I did it opposite on this one. I started with the small stuff, right? There. All right. I think it's going to be good enough because we're at 58 minutes and 55 seconds. And then we'll wrap it up. And in there is some scallion somewhere. Okay. What's that? They're in there. They're in there. All right. So we got two dishes. We got a. This is 100% plant based. I never put any. Oh, I put some butter on the tofu. So 97.325% plant based dish here with the uh, furb tofu. It's got cauliflower rice. It's got a little egg in the mayonnaise. So there is a little in there, right? That's in the cauliflower rice, uh, Korean style with uh, some goji con chili paste in there, right? And then, yeah, so that's that's in there with some sauteed vegetables with salt on them and some soy sauce drizzle with some scallion. So two types of carrots, two types of squash, and two types of mushrooms. Let's take this off so we won't burn. All right, we'll take this off the heat. And then we took the same thing. Is that where you spilt the juice over there I stepped on? Yeah. Hmm. Then we took the same dish, right? And instead of putting cauliflower rice, we took leftover rice made from last night, put some butter and some soy sauce in there and stir fried it a little bit in a cast iron skillet and made that dish there. So there are some vegetables and scallion all buried under that for my daughter's lunch. Then there we have it. So again, we made a smoothie, a basic ketogenic smoothie that you can put, you can have it non-keto if you wanted to by adding more blueberries and adding more beet to it to give you all these vitamin and nutrients in, in one thing. Uh, one, you gotta think that's an entire salad in the 16 ounces, right? With some water in there. So you're gonna hydrate, you're gonna do those things and get that. I'm gonna put this back away. And then, um, and then we made this dish here. So do you just go straight for the rice, straight for the carbs? All right, let's try a little bit of this, right? We've got, oh, those veggies are good. Mm. Cauliflower rice. Got so many layers of things going on here. I'm not gonna eat too much of it because we got to get a picture of this for sure. 
I tried this firm tofu on a small piece here. Oh yeah, give me that. I'm gonna add some lime to that. It needs something. Tofu's kind of bland. Squeeze all the stuff out of it, so I'm gonna do lime on it. So that lime's over. Okay, and then probably you want some soy sauce on it too. The lime is good. The lime's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll stick with that. There you have it. Modern Longevitarian. My name is Scott Stanfield. We're getting ready to wrap it up, so you got to get to that roll the credits place. Unless we got another comment that came in. Oh yeah, we have one more comment from Justin R. Hey. He said, "Here's a tip I learned from a Chinese chef: always oil, no butter, because of the extreme heat when cooking Chinese food." Right. It, the, you're right. You got to control the heat, right? You'll burn the butter, brown the butter. That's why I was going really quickly to get that rice on top of that. But um, that, I guess that's a Mediterranean old world influence in our life to where we actually kind of put, we like putting the butter on the rice and, and doing that. So yes, high, high heat oils traditionally in, uh, in, in Asian cooking would be a peanut oil or something like that. Or you can use a modern day version of that would be avocado oil, which wasn't around back in those days. But uh, Chef, thanks for watching. Jennifer, thanks for comments earlier. Mitch Barron, thank you for comments earlier. I just want to say thanks for watching episode 82. Um, this is the Modern Longevitarian Kitchen, right? Which is a, a new style of show that we're doing where we're actually cooking live. And we're going to continue to do this on Wednesdays and build momentum and put together some recipes and maybe have you cook along with us or where you can go back and reference this and, and do it. Either way, it's fun for us. We love cooking. We're foodies uh, and, uh, and, and health nuts as well. If today's your Friday, I hope you have a great weekend. My name is Scott Stanfield. I am the Modern Longevitarian. It's time to roll the credits.